I want to once again welcome you. And uh, you, this is the fourth session of Beacon Navigator and Beacon U. Um, and we're excited to have Charlie with us again this morning to uh, take us through some through, through the demo and some exercises. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, um, let me just tell you a little bit about Beacon Navigator. And for those of you who have already heard this spiel, my apologies. Um, but this is Beacon Navigator and Beacon U are our way of sharing the unique way that Beacon people go about their networking. And we're going to take a little bit more of a look at that. We started with some research um, to define what that unique style was. We knew it was unique, but we didn't have words to put around it. And now we do, thanks to our members contributing to the, uh, to the research. And we gathered their stories. We gathered stories from people who were in corporate seats, people who were entrepreneurs and had small businesses as well as people who were in career transition. And what we discovered was that Beacon networkers are curious, they're connected, and they're purposeful. So we captured the results of all of that research in something that we call the Beacon Networking GPS. It's a guide that um, where we've defined each of the skills that came out of the research, <clears throat> excuse me, and we've cited specific examples of how our Beacon members demonstrate those skills. So um, what we're gonna do is take a look at those. There are eight skills um, in, the, um, in the, the GPS and the GPS really is designed to help you plot um, an intentional networking path, become an intentional networker. So you may never love networking, but hopefully it'll make you a little bit more comfortable with it. So these are the eight skills. Um, and as you can see, the ones in yellow are the ones where we've already had workshops. Um, so we started in November with um, Exhibit Generosity of Spirit. In December, we looked at the skill of demonstrating expertise. In January, um, we looked at um, acting as a liaison and today we're gonna to do a good, a real good follow-up to acting as a liaison, which is taking an interest in others. Um, if you're gonna act as a liaison, which means connecting people and making referrals and introductions, you really have to get to know people. Um, and that's where taking an interest in others comes in. So in general, this networking skill is about making people feel, feel comfortable with you. Um, by getting them to talk about a subject that they're totally familiar with themselves. Um, and the, so the focus really is learning about other people. So um, one of the ways that, that we always um, illustrate our skills is to talk about how specific Beacon members have demonstrated those skills. And um, on this one, it's about asking probing questions to draw people deeper into conversation. And we have a story from Connie Davies that I will share with you and, and I'll read it so that I don't forget any of the pieces of it. Connie is a principal at CD Advisory Services and provides advice and services in the area of accounting, finance, systems, process, strategy and business and operational planning. Connie's been um, a member for a long time and you may know that Connie was the leader of the ICON Award that we did a couple of years back and are looking for another opportunity to do if COVID will just leave us alone long enough. So here's Connie's story. At Beacon and other events, I look for opportunities to grow my network with great people. I ask questions, hoping to draw people into further conversation. I limit my networking to just one to three people at an event. That gives me time to ask probing questions like, what made you wanna get involved in this area? Was it something you were always interested in? Is this a new gig for you? How is this different from what you were doing a year ago? Some nights are better than others, Connie says, but on good ones, I learn about another person's triumph and how they felt when that was happening. So that's Connie. And um, Leslie Wendell, our program committee chair, couldn't be with us today, but she sent me um, an, H, an HBR tip of the day, which she said fits right in with what we're talking about today. And it's about serendipitous networking. That's what they call it. 
Um, and it's about asking questions of others for the sake of getting to know them. Um, so thinking about Connie's questions, very similar. How did you discover your passion? What have you learned? What do you like or dislike about your role or your industry or your company or whatever? Um, so we'll be diving um, with Charlie. We're going to do um, a lot more of coming up with questions. And at the end of this session, you'll have a, a list of questions that you can take away to use to kind of break the ice and get conversations going in your networking. Oops. <clears throat> Sorry. What happened to Harris? There he is. Harris is a, re a repeater in our uh, stories because he was one of the, uh, he's one of our strongest networkers. Um, and Harris shows a, a genuine interest in others by asking people about themselves, who they are, what they do, and what their interests are. Um, and Zoe's going to tell you Harris's story. So as we mentioned, Harris is one of our sponsors. He is a franchise coach. Um, so this is his story. Um, I went to a networking group for financial executives where many are in transition or contemplating leaving corporate America. I got there early and struck up a conversation with a gentleman at the bar. I focused on him asking questions about who he was, what he did, what he was doing presently. And that naturally led him to ask me what I do. And he was interested in learning about my work as a franchise coach. I asked him if he'd like to get together for a cup of coffee and talk further. He agreed and became a client who's exploring different franchise opportunities. So that was Harris's story. By getting to know somebody else, it turned out to be a business opportunity for him. Who knew? And, and our final example is about talking less, asking questions, listening more, and learning from and about others. And a story that illustrates this comes from Harriet, our, our friend Harriet Stein. And Charlie, I'm going to let you tell Harriet's story and then take away the rest of the workshop. For those of you that haven't had the pleasure of meeting Harriet, she's president of a company called Big Toe in the Water. As a teacher, professional speaker, and consultant, she leads exhausted employees to engagement through mindfulness. Here's her quote, and I'm going to read it so that I don't miss any important part of it. When I launched my company, I was aware that many people knew more than I did. When I was networking, I listened closely to what they were telling me, eager to learn from them. This was especially true when a dear friend who had successfully launched her own business offered to meet with me and teach me the ropes, as she called it. I asked many questions, listened, learned, and jumped in with enthusiasm. My business has thrived and grown, as has my network. Cut me a break. You, all right. Do you see that? Yes, we do. All yes. right. All right. And guess what? This is going to be very clean and to the point. It's not <laughs> going to be sloppy at all. Anyway, so first of all, you're all going to get a copy of these slides. You're going to get a PDF of them. Zoe will send them out to you later on. So everything in here you'll get. And there'll be a copy of this, of the recording of this day, so you can look at this in the future. Uh, these programs that Pat and I are offering are designed to help develop skills and knowledge to make you more effective. One of the benefits of being in Beacon. So I'm calling this building relationships that mattered, demonstrating interest in others during a one-on-one -on -one meeting. So the agenda today is we're gonna have a live demo demonstration of me putting in practice this questioning concept using the principles from the go-giver. Those of that you don't know about the go-giver, uh, I'm happy to talk to you about that. For anybody else on this call that knows about it, is happy to share it with you. I call this the power of curiosity in a networking meeting. The person across the table from you, I call those a conversation partner. They have a wealth of information to share and knowledge. You're not gonna to get to it unless you ask questions. It's that simple. They're not gonna offer it, why? Because they don't wanna brag. They have the same reluctance to talk about themselves that you do. So you have to tease it out of them and asking questions that will prompt them to share the information that you need to know to figure out how you can help them and how they can help you. And then we're gonna break into some Zoom room networking exercises. You'll be in a Zoom room with about two other people and you'll be working on some of these questions as we go. Now. 
overtime is this thing's scheduled to end at what did we say 9 30 or so chances are we may not finish at 9 30 so we've thrown in an extra half hour for conversations if we need it all right so if you have to leave we understand it you'll get a copy of the deck and you'll also get to see the um, whole recording when uh, it's up on the uh, website all right so why are you here today these are some of the questions that may have drawn you in the second one is always very popular. I want to be genuine and natural. I don't want to be schmoozy. It's so, so like some of these slick salespeople I bump into at networking meetings. I don't want to be like them. And I want to be able to influence people that really matter. I can't, not everybody's relevant to me. So I have to find people that matter to get them to advocate on my behalf. Are you not getting the return on the value of your investment in networking? VOI, as we call it, that you expect it. So, Good reasons to be here today, and I hope the program satisfies your curiosity around these topics. The problem with networking is the word networking. It strikes fear into the hearts of people that have never done it before. It has this overarching negativity associated with it. It's self-serving. It's, it's um, not something that we generally do when we have a job, most people. So, what is it? I prefer to call it building relationships that matter. So if, you know, Beacon says networking for life, but if we said building relationships that matter for life takes on a whole different feel to it. So it's a mind, it's in your mind. It's something that we have to think about again, in the words of Adam Grant, think again, uh, to get more comfortable with it because the more comfortable you are at this whole process, the easier it will be for you to work with the people. And part of it is head trash. Many people say, Charlie, listen, um, what do I have to offer anybody in networking? I have nothing to offer. I, I, you know, I was 24 years, I was in the accounting department. What do I have to offer people? That's because we don't know who we are. We don't know how great we are, or what we have to offer. What should I talk about? Hey, who should go first? Who should go last? What should I expect to get out of the time that I put into this? How do I ask for what I want without feeling awkward or strange about it? And what if I have only a limited network? What, 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 what can the other person help me do with that? So these are the things that all of us have grappled with at one time or another. Many of us are far beyond this, but other people that you encounter may be having some of these issues. You have an opportunity to help them. So the mindset that I bring into this is that we're all professional service providers. What does that mean? You have stuff for sale, whether you're selling it on a full-time basis or a part-time basis, you have information in your head that's gonna benefit other people. Networking is about developing relationships, not transactions. So the meeting has to be intentional. It has to be a structured conversation. You have been in networking meetings that went all over the place. There was no structure, there's no intention. Was it successful? I can't determine whether it is, but when I sense somebody's all over the place, the meeting doesn't have as much meaning for me. It's about serving others, not selling ourselves to others. Why? Nobody wants to be sold anymore. They prefer to buy. And the more they know about you through the questions you ask, the more they'll wanna do business with you, help you, refer you, buy from you. So we strive to deliver value by educating our conversational partners, providing value that the other party did not know existed. There are insights, ideas, research, all these things can come out in a meeting, as you will see in a few minutes. Leading with curiosity, asking questions, emerges when we ask those kind of questions that enable other people to share and talk about themselves. What do we get out of it? Will we acquire knowledge about them, where they've been, who they know, what information they have to offer. We get a different point of view, maybe a different approach, a different way of thinking. Uh, we're gonna have an interview in a minute with a gentleman that spent many years in a company that is recognized as a great place to work. They have a whole different approach to managing people in the business. We're able to connect the dots to discover the conversation partners, what and how and why, what they do. If we're going to refer them, we need to know that stuff. And some formulaic elevator pitch doesn't work anymore. We have to get to know the human being on the other side of the desk. And we wanna share relevant value add that we offer. They must understand that we provide value. 
Okay, and and they will know by the questions we ask, as you will see. So, what's my strategy when I approach a networking meeting? Just philosophy in general. I want to exhibit Beacon's spirit of generosity and make sure that the other party knows that I care about them and I'm willing to share whatever information, connections, or resources I might have for them. I want them to come away and say that Charlie is a great guy. That Charlie is really trying to help. Because that's going to, in a reciprocal way, going to come back to me. They're going to let people know about me. Because when they ask me, Charlie, how can I help you? I just need to talk to people like you. So a referral of a person like yourself helps. They've already experienced me. They have the Charlie experience. They know what that feels like. And so they will bump into people that they feel will benefit from it. I'm trying to build relationships that really matter, that make a difference for myself and the other parties. I wanna cultivate advocates, people that can champion what I'm all about. And I wanna identify because I'm a solopreneur. I'm trying to identify people that could be strategic partners that could refer people to me. We have the same type of clientele they provide a different kind of service than I do, but they're very complimentary and we could benefit from knowing each other and helping each other. So this is where we're gonna jump into our uh, uh, networking meeting. Chris Dahl is a new member to Beacon. Uh, I met Chris at a uh, Delaware networking event down on the river there. And uh, we really didn't get too much time to figure out one another. All he saw me do was introducing him to a lot of people because he was not a Beacon member and damn it, I'm gonna make him a Beacon member. So I wanted him to meet some very interesting people within Beacon to elevate his interest in the organization, see that it could benefit him. He owns a company. So he needs as many people out there talking up his company as he possibly can to do that. So I we really have- I thought you were blowing me off, Charlie. Pardon me? <laughs> I thought you were just blowing me off, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wanted him to meet the right people and elevate his interest. And um, I'm very happy that he's part of the organization. So when I was planning to do this, I thought, why not bring Chris into the game? And uh, you can learn about Chris at the same time. All right. So let me see what I do next. OK, now we're going to go back one. All right. All right. So, Chris, you're on the phone with me. Chris, thank you very much for getting together and setting the time aside. I really appreciate the fact that Bob Jarvis suggested we got we get together. It's it's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too, Charlie. And I've set aside maybe 15 minutes or so. I know you're very busy, but maybe this is the first of many conversations that, that you and I did. You still good with 15 minutes? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So what what's of interest to me, Chris, is what do you want to get out of this conversation? What is it like to know about me or Beacon or whatever? Yeah, I'm curious to know, um, you know, what, what you do for a living, obviously. Um, and uh, I'd love to learn more about the Beacon organization and how it's helped you. Okay, well, let's see if we can accomplish some of that. Um, but I, what I want to be able to do is also um, figure out, I need to learn more about you and your business to understand how I may be of help to you. Great. And figure out which Beacon members would be complementary to your particular business. So first, a little bit about me, if you don't mind. I believe that our difference matters, Chris. I help executives, professionals, and solopreneurs, small business owners, tell their authentic story. That's a story that gets them to stand out, be heard above the noise, be visible in a very crowded marketplace. So they can better motivate their circle of influence, the people in their lives that can make things happen, advocate for them. I'm driven to unleash my client's potential so they impact the world in a very unique way, making a difference that they need to make for themselves. We all want meaning out of life. We try to help them get that meaning. Now, in my role as a human archaeologist, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, what does that all mean? I help clients uncover their superpowers, Chris, find their voice and share their authentic personal brand and then execute a strategic plan to get them out into their own, uh, build their own networks, if you will. So now I'd like to learn a little bit more about you. That's very cool. I know, uh, Charlie, with, you know, every time we talk to someone in marketing, they talk about how important storytelling is. So I've never really thought about how to apply that to myself, you know, to tell a story about my own brand and things. Like that. 
So that's very, uh, you know, very insightful, very, very, very exciting. Um, so the, the alias group, I'm, I'm the owner of the alias group. Um, we help companies grow. So we do that through two ways, through lead generation, uh, which is good old fashioned cold calling. And then we also sell lead lists to businesses. And then we're also a certified Salesforce consultant. So we help people um, with CRM adoption and alignment with their objectives. So we help support you know, people's sales processes where there's some gaps. We fill them in for them. Uh, we've been doing it for, uh, we're five years young, um, but we've been in the business um, of doing sales for 27 years as a, as a distributor of uh, DuPont Teflon coatings, believe it or not. So we've come a long way from selling coatings that go on frying pans and other various industrial parts to, to now selling those sales services to other, other businesses. Where did you start your career? Um, I was at Gore. So I don't, I mean, for those in Delaware, everyone knows W.L. Gore and Associates. So I was there for 11 years and uh, what's, I'm an, I'm an operations major, pro, industrial engineer um, by trade. So I had 11 years there at W.L. Gore. They make Gore-Tex fabrics or $2 billion company, very large organization. So I, I had 11 years there and then I moved into a business development role at uh, what was Intex Services, which we've rebranded as the alias group for 14 years. So I've got kind of half in manufacturing and then half in sales, Charlie. And um, typically a lot of our businesses are in manufacturing because that's, that's, that's my wheelhouse. That's where I'm comfortable with. How about yourself? Where'd you start, Charlie? I started in a classroom teaching high school kids. That's where it all began for me. Really? That's very interesting. How long did you teach? I was in there for five years. Oh, that's great. And then, then I, Listen, I, I needed a three car garage. I needed a BMW. You're not going to get that. You know, you're not going to get that kind of stuff being a school teacher. I had four jobs at one time. Wow. When I was a school teacher. So, it, you know, my band uh, with was could only go so far. So uh, I was at a I was tending bar at a country club. I got two guys in front of me uh, that I had caddied for 10 years earlier. Love and it. they made a bet that their one of their companies would hire me. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> IBM lost out and Xerox got me. So <laughs> networking you. works, Chris. Networking works. Absolutely. Way back then I learned about it. So were you doing so, uh, were you doing the door-to-door -door copier sales? That's that's the way in. That's back then. That's the way you got in, right? Yeah, that's that. that's that's the old school feature benefits, know how to overcome objections, a lot different than kind of what you're talking about today. Yeah, today it's totally different. That yeah. the, the, they 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 took two weeks out of your life to drill that stuff into you. And it's taken me a lifetime to get it out of my system. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It's not listen. It's just tell them what you're selling and make them buy it. <laughs> One guy said it great, Chris. He said, um, I was to paint, I was painting clients into a corner where they had to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because no, I had a quota, Chris. Come on. Cut yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah. Press hard five copies. Come on. Yeah. Chris, what's interesting about Gore is their whole philosophy. Mm -hmm. How have you carried that forward? into what yeah. you're doing now with alias? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's uh, so Gore's philosophy is a lattice structure. So there's no hierarchy. Um, so um, what I have always attributed uh, and benefited from Gore was their, their, um, their willingness to train, but give young people a ton of responsibility. So I was very, ex I, I was given the responsibility to run a Belgian warehouse when I was 24 years old. I had a French salesperson, an English IT person, and then obviously the warehouse was in Belgium because the manufacturing team that I, I was on made that product that went into that warehouse. So I, I had to learn how to conduct an international meeting at a very young age. So something that I try to do with, you know, in my employment, employees is, you know, really empower them with responsibility. Obviously, not every 24 year old is capable and ready to do that. But um, I was I, I did a good job. I learned a lot. Um, and I think you learn, you know, by by, uh, you know, experiencing things as long as, you know, leadership can kind of put guardrails on uh, on, um, you know, on that training process or on that process. Um, and yeah, so I've always been a very um, hands off non micromanager. 
um, of my leadership team. I've, I, I, I've, I've given them open books. So we have four product lines. So they have open books. They see their profit and loss for their individual business lines, you know, individually. So they still don't see the whole roll up, but I'm really trying to raise up. I have, you know, their upper thirties, lower forties, you know, so managers and leaders, um, I'm really trying to make them feel like it's their own business and their product line. Some are struggling, you know, some can't break the ceiling, but others are really just taken to it and running. But that's, that's really was the gore way. It was give you a lot of responsibility. Um, you know, you had to get teams in order to work. It wasn't like do this because I told you to. Um, and they they were true to that. The other big piece that I'll tell you, Charlie, that they did was development plans, which was which was something that I I regret a little bit. You know, as a young kid, I kind of dismissed the use of a development plan, but it really was how you moved up the corporate ladder at Gore is you you put where you wanted to go. They gave you opportunities to develop skills that would give you that ability to do that next role. And the people that worked it and, and really used that tool, they're now in very high positions at, at WL Gore and Associates. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, appreciate you asking me about that. I don't get to talk about Gore too much. And it was a really good time in my life. So what, what are some of the challenges that you're facing right now in your business? Um, Good question. It was growth. So we, like I said, we're five year young and it was, I've got, I had this overhead structure. I purchased the business from the previous owner only three years ago. So now we're only on year four, um, 25 people. And I had this, this, this overhead and infrastructure that I had to overcome with sales. We've now done that excitedly. Um, so now we're breaking all the processes. So right now we're, we're bringing in more than, you know, we need to make sure we can fulfill and still hold our brand. And we're doing a great job. We're slow and steady growing and, uh, and handling it well. But like many businesses right now, Charlie, it's finding people. So I have a bunch of inside sales cold calling contracts, three to be, uh, to be exact, that I can't find the people to fulfill. So I, I never thought we'd be at a point where we couldn't you know, resource our growth. So that's, that's our current challenge, like, like many businesses. May I make a suggestion? Sure. You have the capability as a Beacon member of sending out an email to all the members in Beacon telling sure. them about these particular openings. Because awesome. now you take now you take about 400 active members and you then tap into their networks so they can share that information with those. If you need more help with that, I'm happy to help you or Zoe can help you with that because she, she's on top of that every single thing. So. That's perfect, Charlie. I appreciate that. How, how can I help you? I feel like all I've done is talk about myself. Well, I work very well with three types of people. The people that are in between jobs or in transition, as they say, they're looking for what's next. They don't know what it is or even how to get it. The ways they used to find work no longer uh, works out for them well. So they need to come up with a different uh, game plan. I help them with that. People who are in a seat and they hate it. And they say that maybe 60% of the people are in that category, uh, not your company, of course, but you know, 60% of the people want out and they don't know how to get out. And mm -hmm. so I can give them a pathway out and it starts with figuring out who the heck they are, what yeah. can they give and what do they have to offer a company for the future. And the last group are small business consultants and coaches. They've decided to leave corporate America. They announced to the world that they're now available for consulting. And my God, the, the deals came in, they flowed in because all their friends want to help them out. Yeah. But when they get to the 18th month of doing it, crickets. They have no pipeline. That's when they're going to need your CRM services, right? Yeah, so yeah. Sounds so they, 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 they don't know why there's crickets. And when I talk to them, they find they don't really don't know their value proposition. They really don't know what they have to offer. And they don't really need to hit the reset button and start, not necessarily start from scratch, but build their brand differently than they had done before. So anybody that you bump into that may fit that those profiles would be, I welcome a conversation and they'll appreciate, they'll appreciate it because they come away with lots of knowledge. Yeah. I was in that boat about three years ago before I bought the business, I was floating around. So, so why did yeah, you want to be I, a I could see how you could use guidance in those situations for sure. Why, why did you decide to be a business owner, Chris? You know what? I had a paper route as a kid, Charlie. So I've always had that, you know, entrepreneurial spirit. You know, I was, um, you know, someone that had, I, I had another business, you know, where I was working at Gore and also, um, you know, I launched another business on the side. So I don't know. I literally since, you know, you know, 
10 years old, I've always wanted to own my own business. And, uh, you know, it's, it's my path was corporate America where I felt like I didn't have an impact and as much influence, great responsibility, but, you know, I just didn't like, you know, kind of floating around and waiting my turn to move up. So I went to a small company, the one that I ended up purchasing, it was only six people at the time. So I really got that okay, I'm making an impact. I have direct line to the owner. I'm able to drive things forward. And that's just always been within me. So, uh, you know, when I got the opportunity to, to run and own the own thing, you know, run the whole business, uh, I jumped at it. And if you asked me a year in, if it was a good decision, I said no. But now that, now that we're past three, I'm, I'm feeling really good. And I know yeah. it was the right decision. And I'm looking forward to the next, you know, 10 or 15 years. You know, there's lots of people in Beacon that have a similar story, Chris. Yeah. You know, and we have um, some opportunity for you to participate. We call it a business networking roundtable. We have another yep. program called uh, the Rapid Response Team. Places where you could get involved with people like yourself to help one another improve their marketing operations, finances, whatever. Uh, I'm very happy to help you with understand that and put you in touch with people that have participated and what they really, really got out of it. That's, uh, that's that sounds great Charlie. and charlie i'm i'm a member of a couple other groups as well so i mean i'd be more than happy to have you as my guest to kind of you know expand your network as well based in the philadelphia area so um you know i'd love to help you in that regard as well which particular group do you get the most benefit from uh so bca uh they're based in philadelphia breakfast clubs of america it's owned by uh ron jaworski and his daughter runs it um so we've been a member there for a couple years it's it's been great. It's been category exclusive. Um, and uh, it's really, in, you know, really promoted working and doing referrals, as you mentioned, um, Charlie. Um, so, uh, yeah, they've got a great, a, a great uh, amount of in-person events right now. Uh, and they still do virtual ones as well. But in-person is really where we're allowed to bring the guests. But I think you'd meet a lot of interesting people in the area that could, that could help you. So I'd love to take you to an event. That'd be, that'd be wonderful. Listen, uh, we're almost out of time, Chris. Uh, question I have for you is what can I do to help you based on um, what I've shared with you? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I think as you mentioned, typically what we're, who we're looking to meet are VPs of sales or owners of companies that have to drive, you know, sales forward. So that's really where our services can help people. So like you, Charlie, I'm happy to have any conversation with any sized organization. Manufacturing is our sweet spot, but anyone who mentions they're having an issue with a CRM or they're having issues with growth or anything around sales services or process, I'd be happy to talk to people just to kind of talk about um, some best practices and then see if there's an opportunity for us to help. Two things, Chris. Number one, you can take a look at my LinkedIn profile. If you see anybody in there that you say, hey, curious, I'd like to meet them. Gotcha. That I can set that up. And also, I know as you're talking, I'm starting to connect a, a number of members that I think you could relate to very well. And uh, if you don't mind, I'll just go ahead and do a, a joint introduction uh, and look for that over the course of the next week. That'd be great. Okay yeah. I, I will, all, uh, all that I ask you to do is follow up with them because they're going to be I was expecting. Yeah. No, I, I take the referrals very serious. And, you know, as much as Zoom is, is a bit of a pain, it is very efficient and uh, it does make connecting very easy. So I'm happy to either meet those people in person or take these Zoom calls and uh, kind of get to know them individually. What's the biggest takeaway from our conversation, Chris, that you can really act on and get some benefit from? That you're an amazing networker, Charlie. So I got to stay in touch with you because you're going to connect me to the people that I need to connect to. I really appreciate all your help with Beacon. So I made an investment, not as much financially, but more importantly, of my time to join this group. So I'm really excited to get to know, you know, everyone in the organization and see how I can be a benefit. And I think you'll be able to help me in that regards as well. All right. Well, listen. Uh, I will I will see you at an event soon, whether it's virtual or it's in person, Chris. But I, I, I think you and I'll probably be talking a lot in the future. I just see a lot of synergy there. And I really Sounds want to thank you for being so open in a conversation. All right. Got to bounce. Got to bounce. Thank you, Chris. Take care. <laughs> Bye now. All right. I want you all to go to the response button at the bottom of your screen and give Chris a thumbs up. He did a great job. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, seriously, you did a great job.
None of this was rehearsed. He didn't know what the heck I was going to talk to him about. <laughs> right. Nor did I. I mean, I was just curious. You know, I didn't know where this guy was coming from. I know something about W.L. Gore and I know that they're a servant leadership based organization. And if he's taking that kind of philosophy and applying it to this company, he's going to be a great place to work or. Sure. Charlie, can I, can I ask you a quick question? So like, I, I was like, when you introduced that our conversation, you were going to talk to someone who's worked at this amazing company. Like, did you just glean that from my LinkedIn to use that in the conversation? I've helped a number of people get into Gore and get out of Gore. Gotcha. So I know a lot about the organization. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So, but yeah, I thought that was, I mean, I, I've never done that before in networking where I've looked at like past histories and then utilize that as a, as a way to kind of engage the person. So I, I, that was, that was, that was cool. Something new that I never. That's all part of your story. You never, never know. You can, yeah. example, you know, if you had put down that you were an Eagle Scout, right. Yeah. And I were an Eagle Scout. I would ask you about that because that's, that's a brotherhood that we have that nobody else has. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is all about, this is all about emotional connection. It's all, right. all about using questions to get at something that binds us together. And we really want to help each other. Right. You said to me, how can I help you? I didn't ask you to help me. You said, hey, how can I help you? Yeah. So I must have been doing something right. So right. That, they're the indicators that we get moving along. Anybody have any questions for Chris or comments you'd like to offer? Raise your hand and Zoe will call on you. If not, we'll move on. Hey, Charlie, I didn't raise my hand, but can I still talk? Sure. <laughs> uh, I'd recently, I thought that was awesome, by the way. And, uh, you know, my particular challenge is getting from networking to kind of getting something out of like it, I guess. But I also read recently where certainly asking what can I do for you is a great thing to do. But if there's some being more specific uh, can be even more effective because sometimes it's hard. Like, I don't know. I'm not sure how you can help me. Um, so if you can have an idea to be specific, I find that in any most conversations. Great point. Really great point. Helps. Great point. Great point. It, my intention in this call was just to get to know him. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't looking for him to be a to refer people to me at this particular point. Um, I'm I, 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 I'm cautious about doing that, especially with the, when it's with Beacon members. Um, uh, I don't want to be perceived as being solicitous, but. Um, when we're out there and we're looking for a job, of course, you're going to ask that particular question because that's part of uh, your game plan or what you're trying to do. Great point, Ken. Anybody else? All right, let's move forward. So many of you have read this book or are aware of this book. And if you're not, please get it and please read it because I would say the majority of the people in Beacon have read it and they believe in the philosophy of this particular book, which is based on five what they call five laws of stratosphere success. Now, in this conversation, what I tried to do was focus on at least several of them. The first one was, did I provide value to Chris? And only Chris can answer that question. Yes. All right, so in the go-giver way, I, I lead with value, offering value, not telling him how great and wonderful I am. But remember, he said to me, tell me about yourself, and I did. But my goal here is to provide value to him. The influence that I, I have is determined by how abundantly I put him first instead of me. Chris, did I do that? You did. Okay. And finally, the greatest gift we give to people is ourselves. Did you feel I was being real with you? Absolutely. Okay. So again, when we are having these conversations, we should be conscious of the fact, are we demonstrating these particular qualities. Listen, they're beneath the surface. It's a feeling that people have about you. And what it does is eventually builds the trust we need to get people to refer us to the people with whom we wanna meet, right? So as Ken said, you know, if you know specifically who you wanna meet and you can build this trust with your conversation partner, you stand a better chance of getting introduced to them. Especially if you've already looked at their LinkedIn network and you have a sense of who they know that you may wanna ask for a referral. So there's a framework to what I just did. Without a framework, we wander all over the place. And this is just the framework that I teach my clients. You have the introduction, then you go through a mutual discovery stage, and then you begin to narrow it down, provide insights or maybe recommendations 
of what the other person may do or they might do for you. And finally, how do we wrap it up? I start the introduction. And if you go back and listen to the tape, you'll see I covered each of these four areas. We confirm the amount of time. Uh, we created the context of Pat referring, or Bob Jarvis referring uh, me to, uh, suggesting that I talk to Chris. I asked Chris, Chris, what do you want to get out of the meeting? And then I turned around and said, we'll do that. And here's what I want to get out of the meeting. So now it's all established. How did that make you feel, Chris, that introduction? Good. Yeah, I liked because one of the things that um, I feel like in um, when I'm doing networking, I, I do ask a lot. And then, you know, I never really get to build that context on who I am. So they don't really know how they can, how I can help them. If I don't tell them first, this is what I do before then I start really trying to take a genuine interest in them. So I liked how you kind of started with, this is what I do. And then, then you just started with how you could help me and understanding about me, but it gave me that context, as you said. Yeah, we don't, it's not a guessing game. Yeah. So if we're having a conversation, we, we don't know where this person's coming from. Yeah. It's yeah. a guessing game and that yeah. doesn't benefit anybody. Your time's valuable. The information you have is invaluable. So yeah. let's try to get it focused as quickly as possible. Right. So this is exactly what I said to them, almost verbatim. Right now, again, if he were, if he were a job seeker, I would possibly tailor it to him. If he were another consultant, I might change it to be more relevant to him, and still be authentic to my true self and my true purpose. So let's go into the, what came next is the mutual discovery phase. I never learn when I'm talking. I learn by listening. And, you know, you may have heard this from your grandparents. Humans are born with two ears and one mouth, but most people prefer to use their mouth to tell us about themselves. And rarely do they hear what we're saying. How does that make you feel? So my question is, did I hear you, Chris? Yep. Okay. I believe, and there's lots of research to support it, that the right questions at the right time can make all the difference in the world. And again, these are not closed end questions. These are open end questions. I want to get people to talk. I want to figure out where they're coming from. I want to see if we have shared values and beliefs. I want to see if we resonate, if, we, if we're comfortable with each other. When we're talking about people, they love to talk about themselves, but only when asked. So when I say, hey, Bruce, tell me about yourself. People bottle up, they don't wanna brag. It's, it, you know, my mother would come out of her grave and slap me around if she felt I was bragging. It was a cardinal sin in our family. You don't do that. You speak when spoken to. Okay, so I have to ask you a question, you'll open up. So we, on the left are some of the areas that you may wanna start with. So what, where did Chris start with me? Your first question to me was, Chris, what? Do you remember? I don't. You know, what was your first job or where did you start? Or Oh, yeah, I was trying to, yeah, I was trying to turn it back to you because um, so that, you know, I, I wasn't monopolizing the conversation. Okay. And again, you have to be prepared to talk about any of those particular areas within your own life. On the professional side, and I tend to be a little bit more professional when I'm with people, that's just the nature of how I do things. You know, areas like what kind of contributions did you make? What are your strengths? What kind of solutions do you provide? What's your value proposition? What's your why or your purpose? What are you passionate about? Because they're the things beneath the surface that tell me their story. Chris says he's got a story to tell, mm -hmm. right? And that story is not always obvious. A lot of non-obvious things that we need to learn that will really flesh out his story a lot more. Any questions on that from anybody? Okay. All right. So in the chat box, you're going to go to the chat box and the queen of the chat box, Zoe, is going to read off your answers as you go through this. So the question is this, you've scheduled a 20 to 30 minute Zoom meeting with someone who was referred to you by a member of your network. So what is the favorite question that, that you usually have for a conversation partner after you've both given the introductions? Where do you usually start? What do you usually ask them about? So if you would, in the chat box, just type in, what's that favorite question you like to ask them? 
I'm curious, we have a, a, a range of folks in the room. I wanna get a sense of the variety of different questions. I wanna learn something from all of you. So from Ken, we have, where are you talking to me from? Is this where you were born and bred? Oh, that's so good one. From Joe here, we have, how did you get started in dot, dot, dot. Um, and then Rich says for him, it's, he has no favorite, but it's context specific. From Megan, what are you looking to do next and why? From Bob Jarvis, why do you do what you do? Uh, from Pat, what brought you to this event today? Kevin says, depends on how the introductions go. He typically listens for a nugget to have them expand upon. Which tells me that he was listening to me. Yeah. You heard what Connie, I had to say. Connie Custer, what was your path to success? And that's nice, Connie, because you're assuming they're successful. That's good. From Carol, how do you know the person who introduced us? That's always a good one. Yeah. How, what, what, what's your relationship with Bob in my case, right? That's important. Especially if it's somebody in your network that you really value. Because now, now you're probably saying if they if they hit it off, chances are they have the same values, beliefs, et cetera, that I have. Because that's an important person in my network. Any other, Zoe? That's all for now. Okay, so let's move on. My work teaches me that questions do matter. And so I have this formula at the bottom. Let me read you what it all means. Posing the right questions leads to deeper conversations, which then create trusted relationships that lead to referrals to those individuals who may know of people or opportunities that have the potential to either convert those conversations into advocacy or to trigger outcomes that end up being win-win for all parties. This works every time. We have a major football game coming up this weekend and you hear the players saying, we're gonna take it a play at a time or we're gonna take it a series at a time. That's what this is. We all get so focused on the outcome we're trying to create. We forget the proper path to get to that outcome. And you can shape and influence that. And this particular formula, this is not, this is a, this, this came about as to listening to a lot of very successful people who make their living training people and how to get contracts signed. So th these are how these things work. And especially if you're selling vaporware, which is a, is a, is a service that people can't touch or, or see, it's very, very important that you build those deep relationships with people and questions will uncover so many things for you. What do we learn? I always, I don't know whether I did it today, Chris, or not, but I usually like to say, may I ask you a question? After the introduction, I say, may I ask you a question? I ask permission. And how does that make the person feel? They're a little bit open. So if I ask them a question that may, they may think is high trust, you know, and I ask that early, they may open up to me. So I ask their permission. May I ask you a question? What does that do? It helps me learn their point of view, their beliefs, their values, their aspirations, their fears, their mindset. And I, I could take 10 minutes telling you what I learned from Chris this morning in that brief conversation. We can find patterns or linkages or perspectives with ourselves. We can tease out the unknown unknowns. We all have blind spots. We all have um, lack of information in certain areas of the, of the work that we do or where we are in our life. And we can help bring that. Our questions can help people uncover that, tease it out. You know, people will say to me, boy, nobody's ever asked me that question before. And suddenly important things pop out. It helps us uncover assumptions or faulty thinking or the head trash idea that they may have. They haven't thought about it, right? There are a lot of people out there who resist getting a coach because they are taught to be self-reliant. You're a smart person. You were the president of a company. Why do you need a coach to find a job? Why do you need a coach to help your consulting practice? Right? And yet that's, that's faulty thinking. They've now arrived at a different level in their life where they need different people influencing how they think and how they act. We can identify white space, blind spots, gaps, 
uh, and we can help create an opportunity for ourselves to add greater value. So it tells us where we can go to help that person. Now, in 15 minutes, it's tough to do that. But in a more extensive call, it's helpful. Now, you want them to go deeper. In six sigma, it's noted for asking the question, why, why, why? Trying to get to the real root cause. This is the same thing when you're having a conversation with somebody. If you can go deeper with them, you can get to the essence of what they're saying. When most people, when I said to Chris, what kind of challenges you're happy, are you having? If we had a longer call, I try to determine whether that is really a problem or that's a symptom of a bigger problem. Because maybe he thinks it's the problem. If it's a symptom of the problem, I can help him define that problem better. When asking questions, these are some of the kind of questions that I've heard people ask me. You have to form your own list and they usually tie back to your experience as well. And follow your curiosity. I think curiosity is your secret weapon to get to the truth of the other person, which then helps guide you in your conversation and your actions with that person. Then you have getting to know the professional person. I spent a lot of time with that with Chris. What's going well? What's not going well? Where are you stuck? What needs to change? In essence, what I'm helping him do is search within himself for answers that he may not have, he may not have asked himself these questions. One of the things I was going to say to Chris, you know, being a solopreneur, having run a company all by myself, it's lonely at the top. Who do you talk to, right? Beacon is a great place for him to be because he has people just like him and Beacon that he can go to and they can advise him and guide him and give him the support he needs. What do you like best about the career you've chosen? You know, Chris made a change. He's going to be an owner. What did I say? Well, you know, what, why did you want to be an owner? What do you like least about it? What would you change if you could? So I said to him, what are your challenges? These are things that he has to work on and change. What are the pivotal events that got you there? Something happened, right? At Gore, I didn't go there with him. But something happened at Gore that said, I got to get out of this place. I think it was tied to the fact that he wasn't having the impact he wanted to have. In an organization that likes to make impact, he wasn't having it, and maybe he had to go elsewhere. Longer conversation, I go down that rabbit hole with him. What role did networking play in your career so far? This is very important for me because I understand they may not have a big network. They don't know how to network. They need help with networking. And there's some great people in Beacon that I should connect them with so they can begin seeing how other people execute the networking process. These are the questions that Leslie uh, asked. And I, I thought these were focused on the human side of the professional person. You know, just because we're a professional doesn't mean we're not a human. And more and more that they hire human beings. They don't hire automatons. They don't, uh, they don't ha uh, hire people that are formulaic or just follow the rules. They, they want somebody that's human. That people that bleed, people that feel. So follow your curiosity. I think that's your secret weapon. The best questions will always win. And your questions say a lot about you. Choose wisely. The right questions create an emotional connection with your conversation partner. So again, Chris, did you feel closer to me in getting to know me and getting a feel for me? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And that was my intention with him. Yeah. Some people, no matter how you try, they're not going to get close. They're not going to relate to you. Dude, he's just not my kind of guy. And that's important for me to feel. Do I want to change them? Pretty hard to change people. We have to shape and influence their perceptions of us. And I try to create that perception. Successful networkers create that perception that you're there to help the other party to do that. Yeah, Charlie, I'll, I'll just go back to that Gore question, because now when I see you in an event, I'll be like, oh, you know where I came from, you know, my whole career path now. I mean, I'll view you as obviously somebody that, uh, you know, most people don't know any of that about me, and you know, on the surface. So now that you understand that whole thing with that one question, you know, you instantly made that connection to where, you know, my whole career path. So, yeah, again, kudos for that. When I used to hire people, Chris, when I was in the business of hiring people. 
uh, and I was the decision maker, I would always say to them, well, what do you know about me? And you'd be surprised how many people didn't do their homework. They didn't know where you came from, what the relationship between the two people could be. They could have an uncle that went to the same school I did and graduated in the same year. You're looking for connection between people, you know? So insights and recommendations, that's the next stage. And we didn't have a lot of time. I didn't do a lot of that with them, but this is what I try to do. I'm trying to un uncover things that they may not be aware of. So, so I'm trying to find out for myself and for them, what's a different perspective on their situation to be able to do it. If, if he went to a specific problem he was having, I may say to him, you know, Chris, I don't think that's, I don't think that's really a tactical issue. I think that's a strategic issue. Really? Now we start a whole different conversation. Why do you think that? I'm helping him. I can uh, gain insights that I didn't have before about him and for his business that I could provide to him and add value. You know, Chris, if you turn right and turn left, you get to where you need to go faster. Wow, I hadn't thought about that. That's an insight he didn't have. This is the guy at the top. People expect him to have all the answers. I want him to have all the questions so he can go get all the answers that his people need. What are the emerging trends in this field? You know, when we're working very hard with our head down, sometimes we don't know what's happening in the world around us. Now, when we're looking for a job and we're out of work, we suddenly have to figure out what's happening out there, right? Well, that can be beneficial to people that are working very hard quarter to quarter, week to week in their business to find out a trend, a thing that's emerging. It's invaluable to them. You're a source of information. You're a source of help. That endears you to them. They want to help you in return. And the other thing is they, you know, we're providing blind spots, what they didn't know about themselves. You know, Chris, when you were talking about this, I, I thought that maybe, you know, and suddenly he and I go in a different direction. I'd like to ask, may, may I share, share with you an insight? Yes. And then he's given you permission to offer it. If he accepts it, great. If he doesn't, it doesn't matter. He gave you permission. You're not going to damage your relationship. So we're going to go into Zoom rooms. We are all subject matter experts to one degree or another. Pat Schaefer has expertise that's different than Bruce, which is different than Bob Jarvis. And people want to know what that expertise is so they can count on you. So what insights, trends, or perspectives do you like to share with new connections at a networking meeting? Something they can take away with them to remember you by. So what Zoe's going to do is put us in those rooms. If you want to jot down the question very quickly, or if you want to do a screen uh, share with it, so you have it, go ahead and do that before we go into the rooms. Zoe, how much time will they have? There are going to be three people in a room. There's going to be 11 minutes and then a, a one minute countdown for you to wrap up your comments. Great. We had eight rooms. So I'd like to hear uh, from each room as to what was, the, what was the best insight or trend or perspective that was brought to the room. I was in room number one and Ken um, uh, came up with a wonderful, Ken Blackwell came up with a wonderful thing. Uh, he, he quoted somebody else, but this sort of summarizes it. No, I'm gonna let Ken say. Ken, the thing about work, that you talk about. Can you summarize it for everybody? Oh, yeah. So the question that I would ask people is around, you know, return to office and whatnot. Um, but the, the quote that I need to steal from somebody um, is that the problem is not remote work. The problem is work. And, you know, how we've been doing work for, you know, hundreds of years is, is, is broken. And so uh, we need to fix it. And we're at a, an inflection point where we can fix it. And so um, I, I think it's a, it's an interesting topic that is going to get somebody's opinion, you know, like the other person's going to, going to have something to say. So, you know, Good. it's, it's, it's just a flame or a match into some gasoline and you're going to have a, a great conversation. Um, once you, once you light that. Let's go to group two. Hey, Charlie, I was in group two. And I think the most important thing for me uh, was to listen to what they were saying and what their little descriptions were of what they were doing and asking questions. And I think we all got to that point. Um, you know, I love what Bruce does as far as um, bringing, you know, people that have potential uh, product to market, how best to do it, how to save some money, which way to go, 
Uh, Paula was in the group. Uh, she just left uh, and is now, she was an attorney for many years and now uh, coaching and mentoring uh, new and emerging leaders, which is one of the things we focus on where I'm at at my MS. We had a lot of things in common back and forth. So it was learning and understanding the commonality of what we have and really listening to what people do and, and asking questions. So at the end of the, the networking meeting, one of the ways you can pull things together is talk about, you know, the commonalities that you share, how you are similar, how you complement each other or supplement each other. All right, number three, room number three. That was Kagan and Mona. Okay. So um, I guess I'll, I'll start speaking on our behalf and if Mona or Megan would like to jump in. So we just basically started by briefly getting to know each other and talking about the different questions. Um, and then basically we were, we all sort of agreed on as you're, as, as you're sharing in the conversation, you're learning more about each other. And so that third question is really based on the context of the conversation. I think that most interesting thing, well, Megan, why don't you go ahead and take what you thought was the most interesting question? Sure, I don't know about question, but the, what I really took away from it, we really shared is that um, uh, really trying to understand the other person. And even if we want them to, so that we can frame up, even if they're takeaways that we want them to have about us, to try to frame them in a way that is relatable to the person that we're speaking with. Thank you, Megan. Number four, group four. I think we were group four. I don't remember the number. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, so we, we went, we fell initially into the common beacon um, whirlpool, which is getting to know each other and kind of lost track of the, the task at hand. Um, but we managed to get back a little bit towards the end, but it was the, the, the wonderfulness of the variety. And, and at the end, I think we would agree. And one of the first things said was similar to what Joe Kepi said, that was, we don't necessarily know what we're going to ask going in, but it's a matter of listening and then figuring out where to take the conversation to get to where we want to be. And certainly we needed more time than we had, but as a summary, we each ended up with at the end, kind of getting a sense and a summary, what each of us in, in a phrase does best and what's their best put you know, forward start you know this is the expertise that we have so i know if it's strategic hr um then absolutely it's going to be susan and digital transformation and we go to rich so we each had something that we could pull out that was a memory of how best to identify where that person's expertise was but i wish we had something as insightful as ken blackwell's because i think that the problem is not remote work the problem is work is a, is a a really insightful and interesting topic so anyway Hey, number four, number five. That was Carol, Georgine, and Joe Hare. I'll unmute. <laughs> well, I, I, I think a lot of uh, what I just heard is applying to us. We really didn't have much time. And Georgine and I knew know each other, but um, we didn't know Joe, either one of us. So we wanted to get to know Joe. So he was the first person that we just wanted to find out more about what he did. And from that, we were able to make the connection as we introduced ourselves um, to each other. So uh, the conversation, it was interesting the way, uh, even though we both consult, we all consult in very different areas, there were just a lot of similarities that we were able to um, connect with, uh, was my observation. Um, I don't know, Joe or Georgine, any? I agree. I, it was interesting because we come from totally different types of consulting and sizes of who our clients are. And yet there was some synergies. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right, let's go to group number six. That was Chris, Jim, and Pat. I'll just throw a quick one out and then I'll let Chris and Jim talk. But I, 
for me, the insight was how easy it is to for us because we're all successful people, how easy it is for us to intimidate other people when we're meeting them for the first time and how important it is to, to put them at ease. Jim, Chris? Uh, yeah, Pat, uh, you know, that's basically you know, how we spent our whole conversation really is, uh, you know, again, like you had mentioned, all of us have been in pretty high level positions and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, what Charlie has talked about during his call is, you know, they really kind of soften that a little bit. And, uh, uh, and, you know, for us, it was kind of an easy layup because Chris was the subject of Charlie's uh, uh, presentation here, but, uh, you know, it did kind of flow that way. And I, you know, and it was insightful that way. Uh, Chris, uh, I'll let it go to. Yeah. You guys, you guys summed it up. Yeah. Just to build on that a little bit, Jim, um, when we, when we go through our first phase of um, involuntary separation, um, everybody around us tells us our accomplishments, our facts, our percentages are the thing that everybody wants to hear. That's not what people want to hear. Mm -hmm. The only people that want to hear that are the people that will hire you. The people that will refer to you want to understand your values, your beliefs, what you stand for. Are they comfortable with you and referring you? And that's what we're trying to focus on today. So I'm glad that you picked up on that. Let's go to group seven. I think they've all left. So number eight, that was Rena and Robin, if you're still here. Rena? Yes, I'm, I'm still here. So it, yeah. it was me and Robin. And mm -hmm. um, for, for me, the insight was um, that Robin had a background in technology, which I have today. And she shifted careers and... Um, it was even in a new career, she was still using technology in innovative ways of the company she was working for had that option. And, and they were using AI uh, to help uh, with, with measuring people for custom clothes. And that was a real good uh, way of, you know, just be curious and just asking her some questions. I was able to, to, to glean that insight from her and how she was using that uh, in, in a very practical way to work with consumers. And for me, it was, I, I'm always interested, not, not being local to this area, I'm always interested in learning about other businesses to, that, that are here in Rena's company, I find fascinating because of the various sectors that she, that it's involved in. And while her focus is technology, the fact that it has verticals and areas that I would have thought might have been more likely to be, say, in agricultural areas or whatever. I mean, geographically, I was fascinated to learn that it is involved. Pardon me, I've got creatures here um, that are, you know, involved in agriculture and, and chemicals. And I was, it was just fascinating to me to learn about these other industries. And um, I, I was really interested because these are areas that I have a, I know a lot of people who work in. So I like learning stories like that about other companies. And we, we have in Beacon a tremendous variety of different people, so much to learn from. And that makes us a more valuable resource to everyone we come in contact with because mm -hmm. we have connections to all these people. Mm -hmm. And if we can hook them up together and to their mutual benefit, they love you forever. They do, they do, they love you forever. Let's go, we go uh, group eight, is that the last one? Yep, that was the last group. Who's in that group? That was just Rena and Robin that went. Oh, okay. Group seven had already left the, the room. Okay. okay, so Elvis has left the room. All right, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get back to this and I stand between you and your day. So let's, all right. So the next step is summarizing it. And I bring this up because you're having a conversation with somebody. You let's say you. I made a connection with Chris, and I wanted to set the stage for the next conversation. So, if you recall, I said to him, "You know, what's your biggest takeaway from today?" And he mentioned it. And then I asked him the second bullet here: What action was he going to take on that? So, what I did is try to put him in motion toward taking what he learned today and converting it into helpful action for himself. At the end, we need to, 
what what I've noticed a lot of is that networking meetings sort of wind down and then they sort of fizzle out and they, nothing concrete happens relative to next steps. So if we're trying to build a relationship with somebody, if during the course of that conversation, we say, I need to get to know this person better. This person's relevant to me. They may be able to help me or my network. I want to continue the conversation. So I'm going to, make, I'm going to try to offer an insight or, or bring it together. So I said to Chris, hey, Chris, what's a big takeaway from this? And he, 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 he mentioned something. Then I said, so what actions are you going to take? I almost gave him homework, something to do next. What's he going to work on? Why? When we get together again, hey, how'd that go? And that totally reminds him of how helpful I was to him in that last meeting. It brings all of that good feeling back toward me and it starts a conversation. And it may be a way in which I can help him or refer him to, if he's having a problem, may refer him out to other people that I may know, right? So it's, it has to do with this, what happens next? We wanna keep it going. We just don't want it to fizzle out. And at the end, he said, well, how can I help you, Charlie? And this is what I said. This is the way I responded to that question. I work best with three types of people, one, two, and three. And if you were a member of your network knows somebody, I'd appreciate a referral. They'll get a lot out of it, just like you did. So again, it's, it's a way of, of in, a, in a way, it's nonspecific. I'm not aiming. I'm looking for somebody at XYZ company, or I, I wasn't that specific with him because I don't know enough about his network yet to be able to say that to him. So I make it kind of general. But I know that you, you are constantly networking. Successful people are constantly getting requests of people they don't know who want to network with them because they're looking for a job or they're looking for business. When they interact with those people, I want them to be able to say that person should talk to Charlie. So I have to give them a hint of who the types of people are that I'm trying to connect with. The outcomes of the conversations that we have are to understand the relevance of our conversation partners, how I can best serve them, how they can best serve me, what are the shared values, beliefs, and purpose? So with Chris, I'm a big fan of servant leadership. He's servant leadership. He, he went out and took a risk of going into his own business. I did the same thing. So we have a lot of commonalities on which to build. If we did not have a lot of connective tissue there, I may not spend additional time developing that relationship. It's our responsibility to communicate clearly our point of view and our thought leadership, et cetera. Now, I didn't talk about that, but Chris got a feel for where I'm, what I'm good at, the kind of questions I'm answering. He, what really struck him is, God, this guy did his homework on me. He thought enough of this conversation to be prepared to do me a good by knowing more about me to guide the conversation. And the questions reveal these about me, and that's important. You don't have to tell them how great and wonderful you are. Your questions will tell them just that. The purpose of networking is to win hearts, shape the mind, their perception of me, of you, so that we can help influence outcomes, getting them to introduce us to people, make decisions that are favorable to us. And networking is the way we begin to do that. Having conversations that lead to building relationships that really, really matter. Because without them knowing, liking, and trusting us, good things are not gonna happen to the degree they will if they do know, like, and trust us the way we wanna be known, the way we wanna be liked, and the way we wanna be trusted. So I wanna thank you for your attention. Taking an interest in others is what today was all about. It's part of the beacon GPS for networking. It's the value that we can give to our members that our members can share with people in their network. So it's open to questions at this particular point. Beacon is the premier executive networking organization serving the mid-Atlantic region. To learn more, go to beaconforlife.org.